The Good Wife Once upon a time, there was a wise and good king. He had only one son, a boy named Delibus. Prince Delibus was a clever young man, and the king loved him very much. One day, the king called the prince to him and said, Listen, my son, you will be king after I have died. I want you to be a wise ruler, but you will only be wise if you are happy, and you will only be happy if you marry a good and clever woman. So I want you to travel around my kingdom. Look for the best woman you can find and marry her. Then I am sure you will become a good ruler of our kingdom. So Delebus left his father's house, and he began to travel around the kingdom. He went to every town and every village. He met the daughters of rich men and the daughters of poor men, the daughters of nomads and the daughters of hunters. Some of them were beautiful, but they were stupid. Some were wise, but they were ugly. He couldn't find the perfect girl. He spent many years traveling. He didn't look like a prince anymore. His clothes were old and torn. His shoes were broken. One day, the tired prince lay down to rest under a tree. It was the middle of the day, and the sun was high in the sky. His food was finished, and he was very hungry. He fell asleep. When he woke up, he saw a girl. She was looking after her father's sheep. Delibis looked at her. She was the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. He wanted to speak to her, but he couldn't. What's the matter? the girl said. You look hungry. I have only a little bread with me here, and you can have it if you like. She took out some bread and gave it to Delibis. He ate it hungrily. Thank you, he said. The girl started to walk away. Delibis wanted her to stay. Have you seen my camel? He said. No, the girl said. I haven't seen a camel, but a blind one has passed this way. Really? said the prince. And this camel had no tail. How do you know? asked the prince. And there is a wound on its right side the girl said. The prince was very surprised. You haven't seen this camel, he said, but you have described it perfectly. How did you do it? Oh, it was easy, the girl said. Look at this bush. A camel has been eating the leaves, but it has only eaten from one side of it. This probably means that it's blind in one eye. And do you see this camel dung? It's all together in one pile. But camels move their tails when they drop their dung. When a camel has a tail, the dung falls in different places. But what about the wound on the camel's right side? asked Delibus. How did you know about that? Look here, in the sand, said the girl. A camel has been rolling here, but it has only rolled on its left side. This means that its right side must be wounded. I've found the girl I'm looking for at last, the prince said to himself. Please, he said to the girl, tell me your name. My name is Hariri, she said. And what is your father's name? Nakrusa. Where does your family live? 
Where can I find them? Down there, said Hariri, and she pointed to the village in the distance. I'll come back very soon, the prince said, and speak to your family, but first I must go home. I must tell my father, I've found the girl I want to marry. Delibus hurried back to his father's house. Father, he said, I've found her. She's the wisest and most beautiful girl in your kingdom. His father smiled. That's good, my son. But don't be in a hurry. Find out more about the girl. Meet her family. Talk to them. So Delibus began the journey back to Hariri's village. On the way he met Nakrusa, Hariri's father. Let's walk together, he said to the old man. Very well, Nakrusa said. It was a long way to the village. The path was rough and stony, and the sun was hot. Nakrusa and Delibus walked together, but they didn't speak. At last Delibus said, The journey is too long, and we are both tired. Let's make it easier. Why don't you carry me? Or, if you like, I will carry you. Then the time will pass more quickly. Nakrusa looked at Delibus, but he didn't say anything. What a crazy idea, he thought. What a stupid young man. They walked on and on, but they still didn't speak. After a while, they passed some young men. They were looking after a herd of a hundred cows. Old man, said the prince, who do these cows belong to? They belong to my cousin, said Nakrusa. He's a very rich man. Rich? The prince laughed. No, he must be poor. I'm sure he's a poor man. I'm sorry for him. Nakrusa shook his head. What a strange young man, he thought. He's sorry for a man who has a hundred cows. A little later, they passed another herd of cattle. There were ten cows and one bull. Whose cattle are these? Delibus asked. Oh, they belong to my neighbor, said Nakrusa. He's only a poor man. Poor, said the prince. I don't think so. I think he's rich. Yes, he's certainly a rich man. This young man is crazy, Nakrusa thought. They walked on and on over the hills until they came to a valley. There was a field of wheat in the valley. It was already yellow and ready for the harvest. Is this wheat free so that travelers can eat it? asked Delibus. Free? said Nakrusa. What do you mean free? Of course it isn't free. It belongs to the farmer. I don't understand this boy at all. He said to himself, The sun was going down now. It was nearly evening. At last they could see the village in the distance. Some people were coming out of the village. They were carrying the body of a dead man. They were taking him to the cemetery. Who has died? Delibus asked Nakrusa. Who was this man? He was a good old man, Nakrusa answered. I knew him well. And will his name be buried with him? asked Delibus. Or will his name live on? How stupid, Nakrusa thought. The poor man is dead. Of course his name dies with him. It won't be used again. He said nothing. 
He walked on towards his house, and Delibus followed him. Part 2 The prince and Necrusa came to Necrusa's hut. The old man turned round to Delibus. He wanted to say goodbye. But the prince had already followed him into his compound. Necrusa was tired of Delibus. He wanted him to go away. But now the young man was his guest. He had to welcome him. So he went into his hut and brought out a mat. He put it on the ground and Delibus sat down on it. Hariri was inside the hut. She was cooking the evening meal. Listen, daughter, Necrusa said to her. We have a very strange guest. A crazy young man has followed me all day. He's come to the village with me and now he's here in my compound. Take him some water so that he can wash his feet. So Hariri took some water and went out to wash Delabiza's feet. He was very happy when he saw her. She smiled at him and his heart jumped. She was even more beautiful than before. Why don't you put your feet on the mat? She asked him. Look. They're on the dirty ground. But my feet are still dirty, Delibis answered. You haven't washed them yet. If I put them on the mat now, the mat will get dirty too. So Hariri washed his feet. When they were clean, he put them on the mat. Hariri went back into the hut to find her father. This young man isn't crazy at all, she said. Oh yes, he is, said Nakrusa. Do you know what he said to me on the road? Let's make the journey easier, he said. Why don't you carry me? Or, if you like, I'll carry you. Wasn't that stupid? How can I, an old man, carry a big young man like him? But father, Hariri said, You don't understand. He meant that the journey was long and boring. He wanted to make it interesting. When he said, Why don't you carry me, he meant, Why don't you tell me a story? And when he said, Or if you like, I'll carry you, he meant, or, if you like, I'll tell you a story. In that way, you could help each other along the road. Well, anyway, said Nakrusa. That wasn't the only thing. We passed a big herd of a hundred cows. Who do these cows belong to, he asked me. He must be a poor man. Poor? A man with a hundred cows is rich. Then later, we passed a small herd of ten cows and one bull. Who do these belong to, he said. Oh, he must be a rich man. Now, isn't that crazy? No, father, Hariri said. He's right. The man with a hundred cows is rich now, but he won't be rich for long. If he doesn't have a bull, his cows will never give birth to calves. After a while they will all die and he'll be poor again. But the man who has a bull as well as ten cows will soon be rich. His cows will all have calves. He'll have more and more cattle every year. You haven't heard it all, Nakrusa said. We passed a field of wheat. Is this wheat free, so that travelers can eat it, this stupid boy asked me. Free? I said. Of course it isn't free. It belongs to the farmer. Only he can eat it. You tea father, said Hariri. Who is the farmer? Is he a generous man? Does he give food to the guests and travelers who come to his hut? Yes, said Nakrusa. I know the man. 
He's a good man. He's always kind to guests and travelers. And does he ask them to pay for their food? Asked Hariri. Of course he doesn't. Nakrusa answered. What kind of man asks his guests to pay for their food? Then the young man was right, Hariri said. The wheat is free. Travelers can eat it without paying. Well, perhaps, Nakrusa said. But listen to this. While we were coming into the village, we passed a funeral. A crowd of people were taking a dead man to the cemetery. And do you know what this poor fool said? Will his name be buried with him, or will it be used again? Oh, said Hariri, that's easy to understand. He was asking you if the man had a son. The father's name lives on in his son. It's not buried with him. It's used again and again. Nakrusa was tired of talking to his daughter. He went to talk to her uncles. My daughter's crazy, he said. You have seen that strange young man sitting outside my hut. He asks all kinds of stupid questions. But my daughter likes him. Does she? Said Hariri's uncles. That's good. Your daughter isn't a child now. She must get married soon. Why don't you let her marry him? He looks like a good man to us. Oh, very well, said Nakrusa. But it's all so strange. I can't understand it at all. They're both crazy. Hariri heard her uncles and her father. She was very happy. He's so handsome, she said to herself, and so clever. He's the best young man I've ever seen. Delibis was still sitting outside the hut on the mat. He heard Hariri's words. He was very, very happy. Part 3 The wedding was soon arranged. Delibis hurried back to his father, the king. Hariri is a wonderful girl, he said. The best girl in all afar? I am very happy for you, my son, the king said. Send camels and cattle for the feast. Take some servants and all my armed men. Go to her house and marry her. Then bring her back to the palace. Oh no, father, said the prince. She doesn't know that I'm the king's son. I don't want to tell her yet. I won't take any armed men with me. When I go to her house, I'll take only one servant. She'll think I'm a poor man. If she marries me, I'll know she really loves me. The king smiled. Very well, my son, he said. Go, but come back soon. I want to meet my new daughter. It was a long way from the king's house to Nakrusa's village. The prince and his servants started their journey early in the morning. But they walked all day. The sun rose higher and higher in the sky. It became hotter and hotter. I'm very hot and very, very thirsty, Delibis said. I must have a drink. That's all right, sir, the servant said. Look, we're coming to a water hole. You'll find some water there. They came to the water hole and Delibis looked down into it. The hole was deep. The water was a long way down. Climb down and fill my water bottle, Delibis said to his servant. Oh no, sir, I can't do that, the servant said. I don't want to fall and break my neck. So Delibis climbed into the water hole himself. 
he drank the cool, clean water and filled his bottle. Then he looked up at his servant. Pull me up. He shouted. But the servant laughed at him. Pull you up? He said. Why? You fool, I'm going to be the master now. He picked up a big stone and lifted it above his head. He's going to throw it down and kill me. Thought Delibus. Wait a minute. He shouted. Don't kill me. You'll never escape. Someone will soon find my body. They'll tell my father, and he'll send his men to kill you. I've got a better idea. The servant put the stone down. What do you mean, a better idea? He said. We'll change our clothes, said Delibus. You take my clothes and I'll take yours. You can be the master and I'll be the servant. The servant laughed. That's a stupid idea, he said. If I pull you out of the water hole, you'll kill me. I know you will. I won't kill you, I promise, said the prince. And I won't tell anyone that you're my servant. The servant picked up the stone again. I don't believe you, he said. Get ready to die. Very well, the prince said, but don't you want to marry the most beautiful girl in afar? How will you find her father's house? Only I know the way. The servant thought for a moment. Do you really promise? He said. You won't kill me? You'll be my servant and I'll be your master? Yes, answered Delibus. You know me. I always keep my promises. All right, the servant said, and he pulled Delibus out of the water hole. They changed their clothes. The prince took the servants, and the servant took the princes. Then they walked on along the road. At last they came to Necrusa's village. Everything was ready for the wedding. The women were cooking a wonderful feast. Guests were arriving. People were singing and dancing. Hariri couldn't wait to see the face of her dear Delibus. She looked out of her hut, but there was the servant dressed in Delibes's clothes. This man isn't my husband, she said. I've never seen him before. Don't be a fool, her father said. Look at his clothes, his dagger, and his shoes. He was wearing them when he came here before. But my husband is a clever man, said Hariri. This man looks like a fool. Let me ask him some questions. Oh, very well, Necrusa said. But be quick. The guests are waiting. The wedding must begin. So Hariri came out of her hut and spoke to the servant. Tell me, she said, what is the heaviest thing a man can carry? The servant frowned. The heaviest thing? He said. Um, let me think. A camel's heavy. No, a fallen tree is heavy. Ah. I know. A grinding stone. Yes, a grinding stone is the heaviest thing. Hariri looked behind the servant. Who is that man, standing under the tree? She wondered. Here's my next question, she said. What is the sweetest food in the world? The sweetest food, the servant said. The sweetest food? Yes. I know the answer. The sweetest food is honey. Hariri was watching the man under the tree. He was coming towards her now. 
I have one more question, she said to the servant. What is the most beautiful smell in the world? The servant shook his head. What a stupid question. He said. Flowers have the sweetest smell. Everyone knows that. Delibis was standing behind his servant now. He smiled at Hariri. This man says he's my husband, said Hariri, but he's a fool. His answers are stupid. Nakrusa was very angry. Daughter, he said. What are you saying? Look, the wedding guests are here. The feast is ready. Take this man. He is your husband. Please, father, Hariri said. I can't marry a fool. Let me talk to his servant. She looked at Delibis. Did you hear my questions? She asked him. Yes, said Delibis, and here are my answers. Your first question was, what is the heaviest thing a man can carry? My answer is a promise. A promise is a very, very heavy thing. For me, just now, it's the heaviest thing in the world. Next, you asked, what is the sweetest food? I know the answer to that question. I was alone once in the desert. I had no food. I nearly died of hunger. Then I met a girl. She gave me a piece of dry bread. It was the sweetest food in the world because I was so hungry. Your third question was this, what is the most beautiful smell? I can answer that one, too. It is the smell of the skin on the neck of your baby son. I don't have a son yet. But one day, God willing, he will give me a wife. And one day, God willing, she will give me a son. Hariri laughed and clapped her hands. Did you hear that, father? She said. This man is my husband. But he's only a servant, Nakrusa said. I'm tired of all this nonsense, Hariri. I'm your father. You must obey me. Marry the master, not the servant. Hariri went and stood beside Delibis. Master or servant, this is the man I will marry, she said. The servant was frightened when he heard this. He fell down on his knees. Oh, please, please forgive me, he said to Delibis. I was a fool. Don't tell the king, your father. The king? Your father is the king? Nakrusa said to Delibis. My dear boy, this is wonderful. Hariri, my child, you are right, of course. This is the right man for you. I always knew you were a clever girl. You're going to marry a prince. Where are the singers? Is the food ready? Let the marriage begin. Part 4 It was a happy wedding. Everyone danced, sang, and ate. The only person unhappy was Delabiza's servant. He fled from within Necrusa's compound. He was never seen by them again. Delibis and Hariri set out to return to the king's residence the following day. It made everyone very pleased to see them. The king took a quick liking to his daughter-in-law. You've made a wise choice, my son, he told Delibis. I now know that you will become a wise and contented ruler at some point. A son was born to Hariri after a year. Delibis was jubilant. He picked up his son and held him. He inhaled the scent of the infant's neck skin. 
For him, it was the sweetest smell on earth. Hariri gave him a smile. She said, I have given you a son. Now I want you to give me a promise. Of course, Delibis replied. What is it? Hariri remarked, Whenever you go out at night, I'm always scared. The Wadi is the most dangerous place, and there are bad men in the town. When the animals have returned to the town in the evening, please do not visit the Wadi. Make a vow to me. I swear, Delibis declared. Delibis and Hariri thus enjoyed a long and happy marriage. Seven sons and seven daughters were born to them. Following his death, Delibis ascended to the throne. He was a decent and wise king. The years went by. When Delibis and Hariri were elderly, a servant paid them a visit one day. The camels have returned from the wadi, he stated, but one of them is lost. Delibis disregarded his assurance to Hariri. I'll search for it on my own, he declared. Outside, it was pitch black. The sky was filled with only a half moon. Everything was silent. At the wadi now, nobody was present. Everyone was in their own homes, at home. For men suddenly leaped out from behind a tree. One yelled, Give us your money. Still another exclaimed, Give us your clothes. The third man leaned in close to study Delabiza's face. Let him go, he ordered the others to do. It is the king. The fourth man asked, What? Yes, quick, let him go. However, the first two bandits chuckled. They questioned, let him go? Are you crazy? He'll pursue us with his soldiers. They'll find us and eliminate us. No, we have to kill him right away. They started arguing with one another. The first two robbers exclaimed, kill him. The others exclaimed, let him go. The strongest robbers were the first two. They told the king, we have to kill you. We want to save our own lives. The king uttered, give me one last wish before I die. Excellent, the bandits exclaimed. What is it? Please come to my house, Delibis commanded. Inform my spouse that I was spotted close to the wadi. There's a black cow in my herd of cattle, tell her. Its horns extend too far. The other cows will lose their eyes as a result. Remove it from the group. The third bandit questioned, is that all? No, the king replied. Tell her that my house has a black mat on the roof. Remove it. In its place, place a white mat. The fourth thief asked, is there anything else? Yes, was Delaby's response. My camel count is four. Permit my spouse to retain two of them. Tell her to let the two of them go, though. The first robber asked, have you finished now? Yes, Delibis replied. So you have to perish, declared the initial thief. Thus, Delibis was killed by the bandits. His body was taken by them and thrown beneath a tree. The first two robbers said, Come on. We must run away. The third and fourth robbers replied, No. The king's wife needs to hear what we have to say. We made a pledge. Are you crazy? exclaimed the initial robber. She will be aware of our murder of him. Her boys will murder us. The third bandit remarked, 
but she doesn't know that he's dead. Nobody knows that he's dead. The four robbers then proceeded to Delaby's home. They requested to see the monarch. Her conversation was with her seven sons. Each of them carried a spear. The first robber approached the queen with confidence. I have a message for you, he continued, from your husband, the king. Hariri inquired, where did you meet him? At the wadi, replied the bandit. The queen covered her mouth with her hand. Her eyes widened and she turned to face the bandits. Her sons approached her. She inquired, is my husband well? He's all right, the bandit chuckled. We hid him behind a tree. He'll soon return home. And what was his message? Hariri inquired. She was told the king's words by the first robber. Catch these men. Hariri commanded her sons after he was done. Her oldest son questioned, why? They have only brought some messages from our father. Already, the bandits were fleeing the property. Go. Go. Keep them from escaping, exclaimed Hariri. Her seven sons pursued and apprehended the bandits. The queen received them back from them. She was in tears. Mother, what's the problem? Her oldest boy inquired. Hariri asked, didn't you understand your father's message? Hey, here's what that means. Remove the black cow from the cattle herd, he commanded. The other cow's eyes will be put out. This indicates that your father does not wish for his eyes to be eaten by crows. He desires that his body be buried. Her son said, you mean our father's dead? Indeed, Hariri replied. This is his second message. Remove the roof's black mat. There, place a white one. He wants me to put on white clothes for him now that he is dead. One of the sons exclaimed, These men killed my father. And they all raised their spears in response. Hariri exclaimed, wait. One more message was received. Your father said, keep two of my camels, but let the other two go. This implies that while two of these men attempted to save his life, the other two killed him. The bandits collapsed to the floor. The first robber exclaimed, you know everything. You're accurate. My friend and I carried out the king's murder. These two men made an attempt to rescue him. The brothers yelled, Kill the murderers! And using their spears and daggers, they dispatched the first two robbers. After that, Hariri and her sons were taken to the wadi by the third and fourth robbers. Delabiza's body was discovered, and they returned him home. After dressing in white, Hariri's sons buried their father. Everybody said he was a great king, why? Because he was wed to a morally upright and astute woman.